What's going on everybody? Today's video, what are we doing and what are we talking about? We're back to my N64 programming primer series. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at one of the LibUltra SDK demos, that being the lights demo. So we're just going to dive into the folder for this demo and look at some of the files that you'll see in there. And I'll talk about some of the fundamental concepts that I think are good to know and just have a good understanding before you actually get really going. And uh, I'm going to try and keep everything in layman terms as best I can. So for those of you that uh, don't necessarily have a programming background, you should still be able to follow along and, uh, you know, learn how things work. And, and it should be cool and interesting for everyone to check out. So uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a long process because there's lots of topics to cover, lots of things to learn. And uh, it'll be a multi-part video for us to cover this one demo. But I'll just keep adding to the series as we go. And uh, yeah, it should be cool, it should be fun. So enough talking, let's just dive into the code. Here we go. Okay, so as you guys can see, we have the set of demos that come with the LibUltra SDK for N64. And these I have set up and installed on a Windows 95 and any PC. Where, so this is where I have the N64 SDK and the GCC compiler installed. Now, some of you might prefer to run and install your SDK on a VM that runs the Windows 95, 98 OS. And that's totally cool. Uh, I actually prefer to use an official IBM PC compatible computer uh, just because that's the way I like to do it. If you're not at a point where you have the VM uh, set up or your computer set up with a Windows 95, 98 OS and the Nintendo 64 SDK and compiler installed, I'll have a link in the description for you to follow to get set up to that point so that you're able to run the make command in the DOS prompt and compile all of the various different um, f uh, demos that come with the SDK. Today we're going to be looking at the lights demo. So we'll go ahead and execute that. Now, if you're wanting to find these demos on your Windows 95 98 computer, they should be located at the following folder path uh, where you have the SDK installed. So just be aware of that. And these are the official LibUltra SDKs um, demos. Some of you might be tr using the NU system set of demos, which has sort of uh, simplifies things a little bit, but I've chosen to just go straight forward with LibUltra and I'm gonna try and guide everyone through that just because I think it's important for everyone to follow along and uh, also learn about threads and messages and uh, the, the scheduler eventually. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be sticking with the LibUltra demos. So we'll go ahead and open up the lights demo. So we'll double click on that. Uh, some of you might have programming experience, some of you might not. You might be just someone that's interested in learning how uh, the code works for N64 and you're just curious. So again, I'm just going to try and keep things as simple as possible. So if you're coming from a programming background, uh, whether it be game development or just various different software languages, this is probably going to be very trivial for you. But again, it's just for fun. Uh, this is the lights demo. I've added a couple of batch files here. This is strictly just to speed up the process of not having to enter commands in the command prompt. So we have cleanup.bat, which just deletes uh, some files that we compile. Uh, the make uh, batch file here is just r simply running the make command, uh, which allows you to compile. Now, there's also a lot of files that in these demos that you don't really ever have to worry about because sometimes they're strictly for use with the GCC compiler when they need to create the ROM file and uh, they're supporting files for the compiler and you just don't ever have to worry about them. And there's also a, s a lot of files that have information or variables uh, being declared that you don't really have to modify uh, that often and especially in the beginning. So 
Uh, for instance, in this demo, we have elfcom.c, we don't really have to worry about that. CFB.c, you don't have to worry about. Controller.c, we have controller.h. Obviously, this is for the code for executing any kind of functions that we want. Uh, based on the push buttons of the N64 controller. We have conditional statements in there to execute functions that we want to run if we're pushing a button or moving the, uh, the joystick around on the controller. All the code for that is implemented in these two files. A few files in this demo that have texture information. It's been converted with a software tool from an image file, whether it be an RGB or a BMP file and this external software tool would convert those image files into this array of data of hexadecimal values and so this file is just it's just a file that you're not going to be editing it's just been converted into the format that the n64 requires and we essentially can access all of this data in one single uh, call to a variable i4 spec uh, anywhere in our code and it would just immediately reference all of this hexadecimal data. And so we have different files that are storing uh, texture information. So obviously as it says here, Teapot Shade 64, this is obviously being used as the shadow uh, texture information uh, within the demo and you, you'll be seeing that as we uh, run through and compile it. So now we also have a file called n64.h. This file is specifically the display list for the n64 3D logo. Uh, here we have our spec file, static.c file. This file contains some uh, initialization functions as well as some display lists for parts of the graphics that we're gonna be looking at, but uh, we'll be talking about that a little bit later. But uh, one thing that I wanna mention about having separate uh, C source code files. So by taking uh, your game code and breaking it up into multiple source code files, the that provides us with an advantage of being able to control where in the ROM file that information is stored. And if you guys remember from the video that I did on the spec file, which I'll actually bring in here for us to just quickly look at. So now the GCC compiler, when it goes through and does its compiling, it essentially takes each of your source code files and will compress those down and uh, strips out any information that it doesn't need. And so you have this compressed version of your source code uh, in a file that has a .o extension. So uh, we have a static .o, we have a, a z buffer .o, and those are just the uh, compressed versions of those source code files. And if you look at each segment that we have within the spec file, we have an include statement that allows us to add that block of code, that compressed code, and it is assigned to a specific segment name. So for this segment here, we have Z buffer, and we are including this piece of code that's been compressed to that segment. And we also have the ability to assign an address to that if we're if the code file that we're running here is for the CPU processor to run, we use the address command with an address. As well, if you have a source code file that is uh, not running on the CPU, but it is storing uh, static information, like in our case here, we have static.c, which has a lot of the display lists. We assign that file to a special segment that has been assigned a segment number, and that is done by using the number command. Now, of course, we have a variable here, static segment, but that is simply uh, this is a variable that's been assigned a number, one, two, three, four, five, etc., and that has been declared within our included file. And that is the advantage of uh, having your code broken up into multiple C source code files because it, it provides us with the ability to designate where in the ROM, assigning an address or a segment number and we can uh, control where that information is within our compiled ROM file. So I just wanted to mention that. So uh, now we have our main C file. This is the main source code file and that's called teapot.c. So we're gonna be looking at that. Uh, we have its uh, supporting file here, uh, which has some of the structure information and other defines. And now the other two files that we're really gonna be looking at, teapot, 
try.h and teapot vtx.h. And we're going to be diving in and looking at some of the information that's stored here, which again is uh, has uh, vertex information and triangle commands, essentially the display list, which uh, creates the graphics that we're going to be looking at. And I'll try to explain how that's uh, structured and laid out. So we'll go ahead and open up uh, these files in our IDE of choice. I'm using Visual Studio Code on this Windows 7 machine that I have here in my lab. You could uh, use any IDE you want uh, because again, we're accessing the demo files over a network, whether it be from a Windows 98 PC or your VM, it's totally up to you and edit our code on a modern PC. So we're gonna go ahead and open these up in Visual Studio Code. So that wraps up today's video guys. Thanks again for watching. Hit the like and subscribe as always. I do appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Ciao.